Level 11. And the already spread thin guard force is calling it the worst night of, and I quote, creepy shit they've ever seen on St. Swithin's Day. And that's saying a lot. So if you see any of the few guards trying their darndest to keep things together inside our fair city walls, just go up and give them a hug, because Poe Buddy's nerfect. I'm sorry, there appears to be a typo in that last statement. You're listening to The Morning Crawl, where we won't be playing any of today's top hit music, because we will be keeping all frequencies clear in the event of an emergency broadcast. This is Dodger, signing off alone because all of my animal co-hosts were turned into food rations. All right. Looks like we have another hey, letter. A letter arrived from Dad. Dear Lil, I haven't received your last letter yet. I really could have used the pick-me-up. Things are getting really hectic here. I guess Mr. Fantastico didn't find a fantastic stamp. Everyone is busy getting ready for the upcoming naval battle. Even though I don't have any training at all, I'm getting stationed on one of the attack boats on the front lines. But don't worry, I overheard the Admiral say that there may be a plan brewing to unleash a ferocious sea monster, if they can find one but they'll have to make sure there aren't allies in the water when they do. So that sounds like a plan, right? I don't really know what's in store for me, but I'm doing my very best so I can get home and we can finally get our lives back on the right track. Wish me luck. I think I'll need it this time. Good luck. Love, Dad. I guess all the fighting has disrupted the postal service? Oh, the humanity. I heard the news. This is your last shift down here at the shed. Yep, unfortunately. Sure I may not always get four stars, but I think I've been pulling my weight around here. Seems pretty weird to pull me off duty, just as everything seems to be at an all-time level of terrible. Yeah, they pull you off duty. You're the only one that's actually working, apparently, in the entire city. Speaking of things being terrible, let's make sure you're all stocked up for your shift. Um, oh, that's nice. We got uh, delivery service on this. Um, do I want a second bullwhip? Or I, I'm, I can't get any more truth spray. I think I'm going to be good with x-ray and metal detector. Uh, do I want another decoder ring or another bullwhip? Um... Yeah, I've only used the bull whip maybe twice, two or three times so far, so I think I don't necessarily need another bull whip. Um But I'd like to think I think I'd like to have a second one just in case. Um and I don't really have any use for that, but Okay, so that's going to give me... I'll have 13. Uh, that's 1, 2... Let's see, 10, 9... Let's do... That's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. I should have enough. Are you sure you've got everything you need? I've got a big walk to the east gate ahead of me. Um, yeah, I think I'm all done. Thanks for everything, Garby. He's a cool shop owner. The Royal Writ. This message is for the guardsman Lil. Hi Lil, they're letting me add something to the writ. Isn't that neat? I just wanted to let you know that the Cyclops was the mole and that the GLA has been able to, to successfully do five missions without incident thanks to your help. Have a great last day. I'm sorry I couldn't convince Desi to help to keep you any longer. Chuck. Somebody left the food the door to the food reserves opened last night and the enchanted ice melted away. 
Looking at you, Randy, we'll need to restock with fresh, non-rotten food, so please be on the lookout for that. Middle manager, Mike Melroy. Attention, Randy's friends and colleagues, he is officially exiled from the sprawl MMMM. Uh, so they've expelled Randy. Um... We have confirmed once again that the previous battle was won in large part due to the state of the drafted soldiers' equipment. It is your job to turn coal into diamonds, see if there's any way to improve the state of the drafted soldiers before signing them up. Striker. We have put out a call for mercenaries to, to assist in our defense. Sprawl treasury budget has been allocated for this initiative. Try not to overspend the Queendom's money. If you get the best bang for our buck, it'll be reflected in your star rating. Ash. As a result of the surprise, sprawls, mummies, and daddies being turned into cannon fodder, I am seeing lots of vagrant hooliganism from the feral and orphaned youth. Don't be taken in by their rosy cheeks and recently lost baby teeth smiles. Some of them are real stinkers. Malcolm. By royal decree. Yeah, Malcolm would be like the expert on that. All right, and load them up. Do I have enough? Um, let me see. We're going to not that one. Go down on that one. We'll give one on that one. Uh, so yeah, so that is that is everything. That is giving it my all on this last on this last day. Oh hi, it's me, Kelly. I remember you from the wedding. You didn't want Monty's soup. <laughs> Can't blame you. If I didn't work there, I wouldn't want it either. I've got a wagon full of food for my boss to help with the whole people dying of starvation thing. Um. Yeah, we're going to... I didn't know Monty's was part of the war effort. Oh, yeah, we have been slammed in Monty's lately. What with all the food rationing, we're running out of soup. I had to go all the way to the Monty's in Caladar to get supplies. Heck of a trek for a cyclops in heels. <laughs> That's why you don't walk in heels or you don't hike in heels. Uh, yeah, I there doubt that. There wasn't closer you could have got food from? No. The Monty's in Scarborough was burnt down when the duchy was sacked and the only other Monty's is in Fireball Canyon. But their food is all weird and pixelated. So Caladar it is. There's an orchard right outside of town. Um, yeah, before I let you in, we're going to, uh, we're going to scan that to make sure that that is actually food, not enemy soldiers, not anything that can be had. Okay, it does look like food. Let's see... Oh, your wagon is full of that... rotten food. Well, it wasn't rotten when I picked it up two weeks ago. Yeah, that's the problem. That's really not great. Um, yeah, we're going to do a truth spray on you. I was happy to get a couple weeks out of the sprawl. Things with Orlando haven't been going so hot. I think he's been two-timing me with some younger Cyclops. Now I understand what his ex-wife Denise must have felt like, and it makes me sad. But mostly I feel bad for the kids. Polyphemus is quiet, but Orlando Jr. sure is taking it hard. We get on really well, and I think he's having a hard time seeing his dad as a bad guy. Yep. Uh, but you have bad food, so I gotta deny you. Yeah, if they're gonna cheat with you, they're gonna cheat on you. Hey, kid! I don't got a 
to take this from you, too. I get enough of this kind of treatment from Monty. You want to deal with this food? Then do it. I'm out of here. Bye. Yes, the sprawl is desperate for, for food, but not that desperate for dysentery. Good catch, guardsman. Yeah, if we're going to play with dysentery, we're going to play Oregon Trail. Yeah, comment below if you want me to play Oregon Trail. Well, well, well. Well, 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 well. If it isn't the plucky little guardsman who set me up with her pal, the princess, only to pull the wool over my eyes and ruin my wedding day. Yes. I remember you well. And you are? Personal feelings aside, I was sorry to hear that this dreadful war has all but ruined your precious kingdom. Much in the same way that you ruined my precious wedding day. You didn't really care about the wedding anyway. Yeah, I doubt you I even doubt care. I you could even help us if you wanted to. Bertrard is no match for the might of the Marvog Empire. Reverse psychology, eh? <laughs> nice try, but there's no way that will work. That's what Praetor Cargan said, too. She figured you'd be too dumb to understand what it was. She said that? Too dumb, eh? I will destroy the Marvag Empire myself. You know, honestly, that's my strategy when I play Civilization, is I get all the other factions to... all the other civilizations to go to war with themselves and I just continue to improve so by the end I've got like airplanes and bombs and they're like still with sticks and stones. Uh, by expertly using reverse psychology and turning their pride against them they became a powerful agent for the sprawl right on. Hail Groundwalker, I am Marabella. Hi, I'm Lil. Uh, anything else? How are you standing? And I don't know. Flopping I've never around. Been above water before. You lead the way. Um, yeah. We're, let's... Okay, what you doing here, Marabella? I have an official message from the leaders of my people. <clears throat> this is an official notice that the thalassocracy of. Thalassocracy? Thallo means water. So, like, thassalophobia is the fear of water, specifically the fear of open water. The what now? Thalassocracy. It's the word used for an empire that is primarily made up of maritime or seaborne areas. Which would be classic Greece and the Phoenicians. Huh. Learned a new word today. Continue. Okay. <clears throat> the thalassocracy of Bubble Town is committed... Okay, we gotta have a sequel in Bubble Town. Sorry, one more time. Bubble Town? Uh-huh, that's the name of my thalassocracy. Bubble Town, got it. On you go. Okay. <clears throat> the thalassocracy of Bubble Town is committed to the defense of the sprawl. That's the end. Um, yeah, she seems pretty... That's wonderful news! A new ally in our hour of need? Oh, thank you, good Mirabella of Bubble Town, for your message. Are you a warlike people? Well, we don't like it, but we are quite good at it. We used to be a peaceful people skilled more in song and art, but we lost our song many years ago, and now we know only war. Oh, that's rather sad. Um. Let's do Truth Spray. As powerful as my people are with their nets and tridents, I think our most powerful weapon was our song. It could move the ocean itself, but we have lost it. Legend has it that our song has been sealed away somewhere secure, and one day it will be recovered. But where or when that is remains a mystery to me. Okay, we are going Uh we'll do just a check her. We'll do an x-ray. 
And there's the shell. This old shell holds the message I have been sent to deliver to you. This shell retains sound. They say it can even hold on to sounds from many years ago, like an archive or time capsule. I've always wondered what other sounds might be hidden in this shell. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately... We're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to do our, uh, timey-wimey. And go back. Um, so that I can... I mean, we are going to admit her, but... I, I do want to draft her, but I'd like to see what's in the, the shell. Hail, Groundwalker. Hi. Yeah, so we're I don't go past this part. Um... Let's talk. Okay, what you doing here, Marabella? I have an official. The what now? Talisocracy. Huh. Okay. Sorry. One more time. Uh huh. That's Bubble Town. Okay. <clears throat> uh yeah, we're gonna trust. News. Well, we don't like. Oh, that's. Um. I wonder if we just talk to her again, if she'll reveal that- I was given the message to deliver to you in this old shell. Shell, okay. So I didn't have to do the truth. Sound. They say it can even hold on to sounds from many years ago, like an archive or time capsule. I've always wondered what other sounds might be hidden in this shell. So I need to- That's cool. How can you hear what else is inside the shell? That I don't know. I only know how to access this message. They say the instruction manual for it was lost many years ago. Probably in another shell. They say a lot of things, don't they? Um, possibly... Break open the shell. The only thing I have... I could try the decoder. That would be interesting. Let's try the decoder on it. I can always Let go back. The delicate runes carved in the shell suggest the breaking is the only way to unlock its archive contents if you've forgotten your password. Hmm. Hope this works. Yeah! Oh no! My shell! That music! It is the song of my people! The lost song was trapped inside this shell all along! Thank you! Thank you so much! The mer people of Bubble Town will sing their devastating war song once again. Awesome. So we are going to draft. We are going to draft a Mer army. All right, Marabella, get in there and sing your heart out. You're officially drafted. Thank you, Lil, and thank you for helping me find my song. And with that song in my heart, I will rip out the enemy's heart and feel their warm blood fall upon my scaled body. Okay, that's, that's... And there's my line. You do you, Marabella. This is the place. I got the call. I'm a mercenary. Pause. Your move, kid. Um, what was on the writ about mercenaries? Um, battle won the part, so to try. Put a call for mercenaries to assist in our defenses. Uh, sprawl treasury budget has been allocated for this initiative. Oh my gosh. Someone else is going to pay for something in the city? Okay, what's your deal? The deal is simple, kid. You let me in, and I will jumpstart your city's defenses and give your leadership precious information about your enemies. Oh, cool. Not so fast. You don't let me in. I'm taking the same info about the sprawl and selling it to the highest bidder. Okay, come on in. Not so fast. It'll cost you. How much? Well, that's up for negotiation. 
Yeah, you tell we me trust him. Alright, 1,000 gold. Um... Can we Want go a little bit lower? Ball, do you? Okay, fine. 500 gold. Thank uh, you for lowering the price. Yeah, don't mention it. No, really. It means a lot. I said don't mention it. If people hear about this, I'll never make full price again. My lips are sealed. Yeah, the sad thing is, is if I accept that, that means we, we're literally spending more on that than we did the wedding. Um... And it's not like it's my money. We will just admit him in. I'll assist your city with its defenses and provide enemy intel for the agreed upon price of 500 gold. Here, take this contract to the castle. They'll settle up with you. A pleasure doing business with you, kid. Kind of that pressure luck. Did I really want to press it? Uh, Bangalorean will aid in the defense of the sprawl, and you got him for his lowest possible price. Four stars. Charm to make your acquaintance, young gateminder. I am Gary Dolt, son of B and Brian Dolt, and I wish to pass. Will you require anything else? Geary, it's me, Lil, remember? Magnus the Magnificent? Of course. Pleasure to see you again, Lil. Now let me pass. I'm off to a meeting at the Mages Guild. Yeah, but first... I don't know if you heard, but I'm well on my way to becoming a full-fledged mage, a card-carrying member of the guild. Heading in right now to meet with my tutor, Master Tyronius Athanatos. He's not much for having a laugh, but I've learned so much from him. Uh, yeah, I'm doubtful I of that. I didn't know that you had any magical abilities at all. Didn't seem like you did last time we met anyway. Well, I'm just a late bloomer. Master Tyronius has told me that I show great potential as a student, or apprentice, as we are called in the guild. Oh. Do I want to admit him? Um. I'm really not partial to helping the Mages Guild in any way. My magical skills have flourished exponentially ever since my precious birthday present. Julian, that sweet sma um, simpleton, gave me this. I added the pure, unrefined power crystal to my wand, and now I can truly feel the magic coursing through my veins. Yoink. My wand! My power crystal! You tricked us into giving it to you! The tricksy little gate guard stole it from us! Our power! Our present! You seem really precious about it. Ah! Yeah. You took away the darker, more powerful version of Gary the Goblin's new toy. He was getting too precious about it anyway. Um, hopefully that means he left on his own. Uh, but yeah, that was... A little too much power for... Avast, Petey! There blows a fine, upstanding guardsman! Awesome. Upstanding guardsman. Eh? I love the parrot. We'll take our ship and blast our way through whatever scurvy barnacles are attacking the sprawls waterways. Yar. So you're saying you'd like to be drafted? Aye, aye. That's a much more concise way to say it. Yar. All right. Let's. Ahoy there, landlubber! The name's Captain Jane Pigeon, and this here's me fine-feathered matey Pete. 
So you can call him Petey if you're an old sea dog like me. Yar har har. Eh? Old sea dog. Eh? Uh, she seems wow, pretty trustworthy. Real life pirate. You want to defend the sprawl from incoming attackers? Aye, I've heard tell there's plenty of doubloons and booty to be had by sending some enemies down to Davy Jones's locker. I'm not sure I understood all of that, but still, wow. Um. I be captain of the good ship Fermenter, the scourge of the seas. She's plenty yar and holds a crew of the scurviest scallywags to ever set sail. We also make the finest grog known to man. One taste and you'll be carousing shanties until you're three sheets to the wind. Eh? Carousing shanties, eh? Scurvious gallywags, eh? Sounds perfect to defend the waterways of the sprawl from enemy invaders. Aye, we be that. Eh? That we be, eh? Set us at them, and we'll blow the bastards back from whence they came. Yar her. Um, really quickly, because hold on, let me let me go back real quick. Um, on this, how many? Okay, I've still got five more tries of that if I need to go back. Um, I just want to scan this real quick. What's back there? Aha. I probably would have gotten that if I interrogated her one more time. I do like the cut of your jib, young scallywag. Take ye this, a tank of some of the fermenter's finest, to remember me by. Think of me when you're singing your pirate shanty. I'm 12, but I'll take it for my dad when he gets home. That sounds fair. Thanks for the grog. Actually, it's an IPA. Big juicy IPA, huh? All right, um, so yeah, we are going to, we're gonna draft the pirates. Hardy her, ye won't be regretting this choice you've made here today, me bucko. Huh? Won't regret it, huh? Let's go show these bastards why they should steer clear of Captain Jane Pigeon and the dread ship Fermenter. <coughs> Hello. I'm here to join my family in the refugee camp at the docks. <coughs> Aww. Yeah, now what was it? There was something about Sprawl's mummies and daddies being turned into camp fodder, vagrant hooliganism, and feral orphan youth. Although he's not orphaned, but he does have those rosy cheeks. And he looks so sweet. What's your name, little buddy? My name's Teeny Tom McGoblin, on account of why I'm so teeny, and my last name's McGoblin. Me dad and mum and sisters already came through the gates. I was lagging behind on account of me bum leg. Aw, what happened to your leg? And they left you behind. What does that tell you about how much they value you? It fell off. Aren't limbs supposed to, you know, stay attached? I'm too poor to have limbs that stay attached. Um... Yeah, I'm... I think I'm gonna have to see some ID. I'm too poor to have ID. Yeah, we're gonna do a, um... Gonna do an x-ray on that. Yeah. You got something on you that, yeah, you, you shouldn't be having uh, that. Is that a knife you have on you? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's called a knife. I scanned you and it shows you're carrying a knife. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Your machine's broken. No, it's not. You're too young to be carrying a knife. Mind your own business. 
Yoink. Try it and I'll cut your f off. Whoa, that took a turn. You know, you're really small, and I bet I could outrun you, so... Yeah. What's your real story? I love me dad, and me mum, and even me sister so much. Sometimes I feel like I could just burst when I see them. They all treat me with such kindness, and help me when it's hard for me to get around. Sometimes Dad lets me ride on his shoulders, and I feel ten feet tall. That's the truth, and I ain't hiding anything, except for me knife I use for robbing elderly people. I love robbing elderly people, and I won't stop. I'll never stop. It gives me a thrill like nothing else does. I'll die before I stop. No elderly person is safe from me and me robin knife. Oh my god. I love Lil's reaction. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're not getting through. And you are- you're in that rank with that arsonist that burns down orphanages. Teeny Tom, you're going to jail for a long time. Is this because I like to rob elderly people at knife point? Yes, 100%. That's the reason. You You don't know me. Over here stepping all up on me like a Prison don't scare me. Bring it on, Holy crap. You seem so harmless in your introduction. That's called a ruse. See you on the outside in five to ten. I'm gonna get jacked on the inside. Doubtful with a missing leg. All right, you jailed the pint-sized sociopath and save the octogerians of the sprawl. They'll live to cheek pinch another day. And we have a fish. Hi. Is this where to sign up for the draft? Yes, it is. You are signing Wonder. up a fish. Would you like to be drafted to fight in the war? Oh no, it's not for me. It's for him. For who? My pet fish, Dennis. Um. Sure, Dennis let me see. Want to fight? He wants to fight, all right. And he is very good at it. I promise you. Um, let's do another really interior. He is quite a violent fish. Uh, trust. Would it be safe to have him out there fighting? So long as no one else you want to keep safe is out there, he'll tear right through anyone or anything in his path. Um, let me do some truth spray. Dennis here has gone 28 and 0 in the admittedly immoral and illegal underground fish fights that happened down at the docks. Or at least they used to before they set up that refugee camp. He's undefeated and shows no signs of slowing down. So yeah, he seems pretty on the up and up. Um, I wonder if I... Nope. I can't go back and re-listen to something. Um, yeah, we're going to raft the fish. Okay, here's your paperwork. Welcome to the war effort. Not me, remember. It's for the fish. Got yeah, it. Well, the fish who's is handling? Who's handling the fish bowl? Eleven score. All right, we got another four point oh. All right.
And there we go. Now we are done with our day. And we get to explore the city. Uh, which is only the tavern. And we come into a, uh... You should see the look on your dumb face. Shouldn't see the look on your face. She looked like she was this close to peeing her pants. No, she wasn't. Nuh-uh. Well, the surprise isn't even the surprise, Princess Pea Pants. Wait till you see. Shh, don't spoil it. Okay, okay. Congrats on not having a job anymore. We're glad to have you back. Finally. Yeah. I thought you were trying to get a job. And you were getting a job. And you were becoming a little con man. Uh, yeah, and then go upstairs and go to bed. Hit hey, the hay. Arda, mind if I write a quick letter to my dad? Uh, yeah. Maybe later, though, okay? Maybe later? No, I have to send him one now. It can wait. Enjoy your party. And your surprise is over there by the fire. But first, I know you're just a kid, but I'll mix you up any drink you'd like on the house to celebrate everything you've been doing around here. What'll it be? I'd honestly like a glass of milk right now. Um, I've got the grog for dad. Meat, eh, yeah, no. Warm milk doesn't sound good. We'll try the Coming fizzy. right up. Uh, yeah, we'll sip it. I'm sure between my job at the city council and as an administrator with the Guard Corps, if the sprawl was on the verge of catastrophic collapse from within and without, Mike Melroy would know about it. Oh, someone else has two jobs. I may be baked out of my gourd, as per usual, but I'm telling you, I'm seeing bad omens everywhere. Something very bad is about to go down. Oh, Lil, congratulations. What a party. Are you having a good time? Uh, yeah. Honestly, I am. I'm really feeling the love, Echo. What's a love, Echo? Echo. I'm going to miss this. I'm here to collect your badge and your gun. What badge and gun? No one gave you a badge and a gun? How the hell did you navigate your way through 11 levels without your badge and your gun? Uh, the same way you managed to get through with being promoted. There are plenty of ways to solve a problem without a gun. Preach it. But the badge, Lil, it's all in the badge. I'm gonna miss this too. Yeah, there is no badge. Alright, do we have a separate talk for... I'll be sure to tell your tale in my travels if we survive this. Peace, little sister. Ah, oh, nice little chronicler. Ah, oh, the little poster. That's cool. Magic lovers of the sprawl, please put your hands together for the one, the only, the Edward the Great Magician! Alakazoo, Alakazee! He has his glasses. Bertram Bartleby the Bloated, I appear! Edward, the official officiant. It's the Edward, the great magician again. Come out of retirement to play one more preteen birthday party. How old are you today, little girl? Uh... Yeah, we'll play I along. I picked up a few tricks from a true blue real deal mage I met. Lil. I am small but nimble with a bushy tail. In trees I scamper never to fail. I gather my food and store it with care. Do you know what animal I am? Do you dare? A squirrel? That's right! A sparrow! 
Ta-da! What? Sparrows don't have bushy tails. And since when do they scamper through trees? Exactly. When they're they not flutter. flying, of course. Yeah, okay. You got me there, the Edward. Do you have time for another? Uh, no. Well, I'll be here with my second trick when you're ready. We'll think about that. Did I just trigger the... There she is, my little guardsman. Roll credits. Um... Dad? What are you doing here? Oh, I missed you so much. What is going on? You stopped writing letters. I, I got worried something had happened to you. That's not why you leave the... What could happen the... to me? I wasn't the one off fighting a war, remember? Yeah, but you get some pretty tough customers coming through that gate. Sometimes if you try to whip them, or even just talk to them in the wrong way, it's game over. I got worried. Yeah, that didn't stop you from leaving her at the gate, like, 11 levels ago. So they let you leave the war because you were worried about your daughter? I mean, shouldn't you be fighting in an epic naval battle right about now? No, they didn't. And yes, I should be. But I couldn't stand being at war for a second longer. That's called desertion. I was actually pretty instrumental in winning a couple of battles out there. I did some amazing things for a chubby middle-aged guy. I think all because I was thinking about you and wanting to keep you safe. Things have been hard and weird and creepy, but I'm so glad you're here. I feel like I can take on anything if you've got my back. And I'm glad you didn't die. I'm glad I didn't die too. I could die any day now. Yes, Ms. Abernathy. This isn't about you, Mrs. Abernathy. All right, Seamus. I'll be up to tuck you in soon. We can figure out what the rest of our lives will look like in the morning. And do hug. Okay, I gotta go talk to Mr. Fantastico. Yeah. This hat, it is not as fantastic as my previous hat. I'm sorry, what? Mr. Really? Because I have to say that's a pretty fantastic hat. You should have seen my previous hat. Ay, my journey, it continues. You, you gotta There's figure no out something. Some people. Um, we're gonna do... What I was trying to do was this one. Do okay. you have time for another? Yeah, let's do the second okay, one. Okay, here we go. I'm small and petite with feathers so fine. I sing sweet melodies, a sound so divine. I flit and flutter through the air with ease and build my home high up in the trees. Who am I? Can you guess my name? I'm a little bird that's known for its fame. That is a sparrow. That's right! It's another sparrow! Ta-da! But I want to see the squirrel. Okay, this time it actually made sense. Made sense and amazed you! Honestly, that was pretty great. Thanks for being at my party, the Edward. I'm gonna miss you. Alright. Everyone's there. And I'm gonna be the first one to go. Are you sure you went to bed? Yep, time to hit the hay. All right, we get to find out the outcomes. Kelly, without the arrival of the wagon carrying ingredients, Monty's home of the soup was in a real predicament. Just like he did during the great bowl shortage of O2, Monty was going to have to improvise. Throwing eggshells, wood shavings, and anything else that seemed remotely edible into the pot, Monty created the new signature menu item, the Slim Pickens Stew. Everyone who ate it experienced intense gastrointestinal pain and explosive diarrhea 
At the restaurant, it took a substantial bribe to the health inspector and a very large mop to clean up the mess. Kelly put in her two weeks notice and started looking for another job. She was tired of being indirectly responsible for poisoning so many people. Prince Phineas was insulted to hear that Praetor Cargan thought he was too dumb to know what reverse psychology was. How dare she think something like that, he thought. He was going to have to think of a way to make good on his vow to defeat Margov once and for all. But how exactly was he going to destroy the entire Margov Empire? He started thinking this was going to be tough, maybe too tough. He probably shouldn't even try to do it. But maybe that's why he should do it, to prove that, he could, that it could be done. And he was just the man for the job, but if he could do it, anyone could, right? Maybe. Months of talking himself into, and subsequently back out of, doing battle with the Margov eventually drove Prince Phineas mad. The people of Petrard staged a coup and demanded he step down as leader of Petrard, and maybe he should do the exact opposite of what they wanted, he thought, maybe. Bangalorean. The intelligence gained from the Bang Bangalorean led to the evacuation of an outlying farming village before the enemy could attack, saving dozens of lives. A win for the sprawl in a season of losses. Using the money raised for providing the intel, the Bangalorean was able to commission the design of a personal jetpack. His budget was a mere 500 gold, so it was an absolute hack job, and it immediately exploded, severely burning his face. Thank goodness for the helmet he already possessed. Gary, without the pure unrefined power crystal from Julian to increase his magical might, it didn't take long for Gary to fall out of favor with or even the awareness of the Dark Mages. According to his former mentor, Tyronius, Gary was just not Freedom Caucus material anymore. After being unceremoniously dumped by the Dark Mages, Gary went back to work with Julian at the GLA. It took him quite a bit of, it took quite a bit of work to deprogram Gary. But with tenacity and a bit of luck, Carl the Troll finally got through to him and shattered Tyronius' hold. However, to this day, Gary catches himself losing time and drifting off when the light hits a power crystal just right, reminding him of the dreams of power and fire he once had during his time with the mages. Teeny Tom McGoblin Teeny Tom became the prince of prison. He crafted makeshift shivs and used them without prejudice to grow his reputation. He eventually joined a game called The Little Rascals. It was easy to get members like Spanky and Buckwheat to accept him as the new leader, but there was a lot of pushback from their current leader, Alfalfa, and his handful of loyal followers. But they soon fell in line after Tom showed everyone how persuasive he can be with his shiv. Let's just say they don't call him Alfalfa anymore. The McGoblin family couldn't afford Tom's bail, so the only reunion they ever had with their son was over the telephone and behind a thick layer of glass. And now on to the war effort. Did I make the right calls? Nope. Sprawl defeated. Maribel returned home to Bubble Town with the message, We swim to battle. With their rediscovered battle song on their lips and their hearts, Maribel and her tribe swam forth and fought vi valiantly alongside the Sprawl's armada. Captain Jane Pigeon and her pirates, read costume brewery employees, raised the sail and their good ship for Mender and set off for adventure. Luckily, the captain had the good fortune of removing their signature IPA from the ship prior to departure, which led the pirates to soberly take down a few more enemy vessels than they would have had they been sauced. Dennis, the seven-time all-fish fighting champion, was released into the Sprawl Harbor with a loud plop. As he had done all his life, he attacked the first thing he saw with all ferocity... 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 A thoroughbred, sarcastic, fringe head, cold muster. Could muster. Unfortunately, the first thing in Dennis's path were the other drafted forces. By the time the enemy arrived in the harbor, Dennis was fast asleep in his empty in the empty harbor, 
with a full belly and sense of accomplishment. Morning came, the waters of the Sprawl Harbor finally calmed. The enemy ships had left the harbor, but not before laying waste to the docks and the encampment that had sprung up there. War had caught up with the refugees once again. There were no survivors. The destruction of the docks will have a massive impact not only on the Sprawl's military force, but on its ability to receive essential supplies and food. A red sky shone brightly that morning, an ominous portent of doom.